Hi folks and welcome to Cates from on the Hill for the latest in my walk and talk series. Now occasionally when I do these walks I get lucky and the reason I get lucky is because someone has already done the hard work of setting out a trail and the easy thing for me to do is to then follow that trail, bring it across to you in the form of a film and we all kind of enjoy it together. So thanks very much to the folks down at the East Surrey Museum in Catron Valley in conjunction with the Bourne Society because they put together a Catrum on the Hill town trail. So I'm going to follow the map and follow the trail today and we'll pick out all of the sites and for each site there's a QR code and what you can do is use that code to get more information about that particular location. Originally dedicated to St. Leonard, a French hermit. This tiny church was extended in the 13th century with the addition of the North Isle. So where that curves inwards, that's all that remains of the original chancel dating from the 11th century. And we can see on the wall there, outlines of two arches. See against the windows. Remains of an aisle and chapel that were added to the south side of the nave early in the 13th century. During the 14th century, the South Island Chapel were demolished. The arches formerly separating the aisle from the nave were blocked up to form a new wall, incorporating a new main door and a large window. Two bells in the belfry date from 1664, and the belfry was reconstructed and heightened in the late 18th or 19th century. And now we've got a wooden bedhead type memorial from 1847. This is a once common type of grave marker. Really quite beautiful church, though I'll confess I've not visited in the past. Very well looked after plants and roses. And now we cross the road to St Mary's. Shame really, the, uh, the church was locked, but it would have been nice to look round inside. There were warnings about uneven paving stones in there. Something to bear in mind should you be able to pay a visit in the future. It's a busy road, but you, you've got good vision here for what's coming up the hill and what's heading its way down. Again, bear that in mind if you do the walk. In 1851, Catrum had only 487 residents, but with the coming of the railway in 1856, Catrum's population grew rapidly and a new church was needed. So St Mary's cost £3,500 in 1866. When the North Isle was completed in 1913, the church could accommodate 550 worshippers. Reference is made to notable burials here. So one of them was Samuel Gibson. And there it is. I didn't expect to find that so quickly. Samuel Gibson was a veteran of the Battle of Waterloo, a long-term resident of St Lawrence's Hospital, and died at the age of 101, buried with full military honours courtesy of the Guards Depot nearby. I understand towards the rear here where we're heading is the public cemetery, which contains the grave of William Garland Soper, often referred to as the father of modern Catron. I found the grave of William Garland Soper, father of modern Catrum, it says here. And it probably was the one that I saw online with cracks on it and laying down because it looks like the repairs have been carried out. 
Let's just see a little crack there towards the top. And now we're going to head towards Queen's Park. One thing to mention is the route is not a circular route. Where it finishes, it's a case of coming back to where you parked. So you may want to strategically park somewhere in between the finishing point and the start point. So you've got equidistance from when you start and finish. So Queen's Park, the bus stop just there. I don't know if I can get in there, public footpath. I won't take a chance because I know that there's an entrance up here. So whilst we had one and two opposite one another, three and four are pretty much opposite one another. Opened in May 1900 to mark Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, hence the name Queen's Park. And it contains two memorials to the Boer War, a beech tree to mark the relief of Ladysmith and the Bora Ambulance Station, which we'll pop round and have a look at. This is where I see that I could have got in through that footpath. So, if you do this walk, and you're coming from the churches, just follow the footpath by the bus stop and through the gates. Now, as I mentioned about the QR code providing more information, I did do some additional prep to pick out certain things that I thought would be easy to reveal as I go round, just little kind of extras, uh, because many of the sections have quite a bit of content. So, it will become boring very quickly if I read all of that word for word. So this is the Bora Ambulance Station, built in 1902. The ambulance station is erected in memory of Henry James Bora, a member of the Catron Division of the St John Ambulance Brigade, who died at Bloemfontein, South Africa, on June the 12th, 1900, while doing duty with the Portland Field Hospital. Lovely little building, a door detail there. Great that old building, 121 years old currently is in use. That's the uh, Bowls Club clubhouse, the Bowling Green's just behind. And this is the air raid shelter, locked up, designed to hold 50 people. Very functional design. I don't think we could say too much else other than that. There is a very small shelter, I believe, in the valley. I did a YouTube short on that one. Substantial steel door there. I did see one photograph where it was bricked up. That particular door wasn't there. It was just a set of kind of bricks from floor to ceiling. But uh, it is there. It still stands. And it's probably easier to leave it there rather than try and take it down. Really, really nice park. Really nice indeed. Now we're going to cross the road once again, crisscross all the way. And again, I would say pretty good views left and right. There is a little island up there which 
maybe that's a safe option, although no, I'm good to go. And they have got the little pavement thingy here, so that is a valid place to cross opposite the park. Originally founded in 1875 in Underwood Road, Harestone Valley, moved to Church Road in 1905, but closed at the advent of World War II in 1939. In 1948, the building became an annex for the Caterham District Hospital after many reorganisations. It's presently a rehabilitation hospital with an outpatients department and a walk-in centre. heading along to the old rectory now. Probably something that, certainly if you come in this side of Catrim, you will become very aware of the focal point, the cedar tree, and how magnificent it is. So the rectory started life as a small timber framed house, possibly originating from the 16th century with many later additions in the 18th and 19th centuries by successive rectors. The building was taken over by Buxton builders for their offices in 1984 and sympathetically restored. I think they've done a wonderful job. Absolutely first class. The huge cedar was originally in the front garden and is now a focal point of the town for things like the Christmas lights switch on. The plaque that you can see on the outside commemorates Jarvis Kenrick, the son of a rector, who scored the very first goal in football's FA Cup and was also a Surrey cricketer. Weatherball Cottage has now been placed by this housing development, but number 84 remains, dating from the early 17th century, and probably the oldest existing dwelling in Catrum, grade two listed by English Heritage. And this was originally Rutley's Stores, and that's now Swift Windows. So now we're gonna go and take in a couple of pubs. The old king and queen on the left and the blacksmith's arms on the right. The Royal Oak pub there. And I can see in the distance a glider over Kenley. This camera's unlikely to pick it up. Take my word for it, folks. Good day for it as well, as much as I know. A nice old sign up there. D. Claridge Fruit and Florist. So the blacksmith was the first to open as a beer house in 1820, so that's over the road, with the king and queen following in 1845. Although well, they're probably in an older building, I mean, it's difficult to tell now. We've arrived, number four, Raja Tandoori. Actually a blue plaque there. So this provided a home from home for new army recruits. 
and next to it there was an old fire engine house that's gone this is the laundry room for the flats as i understand it and they built it kind of reconstructed it in uh, in its memory patron fire engine house stood on the site of this building and was in use from 1890 to 1928 so yeah built in 1998 and uh i incorporate many of the original materials i did not know that but that's that's good So Raja Tanduri is the old soldier's home. And then next to it would have been the fire engine house, that kind of location. Just capture the golden lion there. Just a shame to see a public house unable to operate. Originally the forge of Robert Viger, the local blacksmith who became the first fire chief, an ironmonger, and various other things. Lovely old building. The account on the link that you get to by clicking or tapping the QR code for Mr. Viger's forge building is very impressive, very comprehensive. So uh, I urge you to have a look at that. I'm just coming up past the Raglan shops, Raglan precinct, Raglan shopping centre. So the next stop is number 10, Hillcroft School. The first school on the site was established in 1804-5 on land donated by Thomas Clark subject to the free education of not less than six children. Following the 1870 Education Act, the school became the Catron Hill Board School, occupying the current buildings which date from 1873. Although it says 1872, that could have been, one was the build date and one was the using date, occupation date, teaching date. In 1937, the school became primary only when older children were moved to a new school in the valley. And in 1979, the primary school was renamed Hillcross School and still continues on this site today. Quite a few schools survived, don't they? In terms of the, the building, the structure. OK. That was number 10. Now number 11. This was originally called the Asylum Tavern because it's directly opposite what was the entrance to St Lawrence's Hospital. In 1975, this place hit the headlines because it was a target of an IRA terror attack. So on the evening of the 27th of August, a bomb that was planted under a seat went off. It actually took the roof off and it injured 23 civilians and 10 soldiers. This was the entrance to St Lawrence's Hospital, formerly the Metropolitan Asylum, 1870 in 1994. The hospital opened in 1870 and grew to cater for over 2,000 mental health patients and was a major employer in the town. Closed in 1994 and redeveloped for housing. Heading along now towards the barracks or location thereof, now Tesco. And whilst I didn't live in Catron we did used to come up here quite often a band played in, I think it was Pengeli's Wine Bar. Had a couple of gigs there, I think. Thank you. So the Guards Depot at Catron, established in 1877. as a home for all the Guards' foot regiments 
that closed in 1995 for development. Well, the chapel was built in 1886, now home to Skaterham Skate Park and Community Centre. There's a little plaque there saying the Guards Chapel. Generations of guardsmen attended services here. Took marriage vows, children were christened, and some went to Catrum cemeteries from here. Many of the buildings have been repurposed, so let's have a little wander. I mean, I love the structure of these buildings. Functional, but still with some class. I would suggest that was a building. This sort of village warden thing there. Oh, no. And we've got a, what looks to be a pub, Coldstream Road. Coldstream Guards were formed in 1650 in the oldest continually serving regiment in the British Army. And there we go, look, the officer's mess, there you go. I've never been up here, so it's quite nice to see it for the first time, really, capture it. Well, well, well. How beautiful. <laughs> so most certainly ex-military buildings all around here. Cricket pavilion and square. Wonderful. Of course, you wouldn't have been able to get anywhere near here when it was operational. Well, without the right permits and things. This is really, really nice. And it feels like I'm in some very posh part of London, like a, a Chelsea, Chelsea barracks. But it has that feel about it. I see a sign for Grenadier Place up there. I'm not going to go all the way through, but uh, you can certainly get a feel for it. It's quiet. Served by a bus, because I saw a sign. The Village Animal Hospital, just over there. In Sergeant's place. Yeah, really nice place. And if you live here, you've not got far to go to get your shopping. Now, in terms of a full comprehension of the context here and the land that was covered. I'm just going to go into a sequence showing how it was by virtue of a map and then how it is looking at the uh, current layout with Tesco. Anyway, that completes the walk and talk. Uh, this is Catrum on the Hill. Thanks again to the folks at East Surrey Museum and the Vaughan Society for putting all this together. Remember, you can download the leaflet and you can use the codes on each section of the leaflet to get more detail. Hope you've enjoyed my little walk and talk of Catrum on the Hill. Take care. And I'll see you in the next one.